Hello everybody and welcome back to the Two Nordics Podcast. As always, I'm joined by my good friend Timmy Long. Hi everyone. And this week we have Cork City FC captain and stalwart, uh, Garrod Morrissey. How's the farm, Garrod? Hi lads, how are you? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming to meet us here in Pleasure. our lovely studio on Little Island. Um, a lot of people will know you, of course, but for those who might not know you, might not be that familiar with you, who are you, where are you from? I'm obviously like growing up. Uh, so I'm Garrod Morrissey. Um, from Mahin and I suppose um grand grown up. Uh, do you know I couldn't have, to be honest, I couldn't have picked a better place to grow up. Like do you know, um when you're like the boys always be winding me up in the training ground and that like do you know from being from Mahin and all that like yeah. just saying it's rough or whatever, like but I wouldn't have noticed any of it. But I suppose now that I'm older and I look back at it, I I'm kinda of going, right, like if I seen a young flab growing up and he was he's seen some of the stuff I seen maybe growing up I would have thought all oh, right yeah. that is a rough area but yeah. when you're in it you like I I've heard Mahan being described as the north side of the south side yeah <laughs> Norries love that one they love they love saying that like but uh, I get that the whole time but um, yeah, yeah so look yeah. it's a great spot exactly I, I think it's uh, you know everyone down there like they looked after me like as soon as I started excelling at football like you know they would everybody kind of kept an eye out for me do you know what I mean whatever mm. do you know if they up around the shops or something, say late at night or whatever, like they be like, What are you doing? You need to clear you know that kind of way. Yeah. So there was there's a lovely um sense of community about it, like yeah. uh, so like And we'd have that too in Nakhnahini Hill. Yeah, yeah, we look we look after our own, like yeah. we, we, we know what everybody's going through, so everybody kinda looks out for everybody else. Uh, yeah. you know, your older brother would have looked out for his younger brother and all yeah, these different yeah, things. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, it's very true. You'd have the talented young fellas then in the area and you know, like um for the wild young fellas if 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 the young fellas if you've wild young fellas and you've quiet young fellas the wild young fellas will call the quiet young fellas you know uh, soft boys yeah, or pussies yeah, but if yeah. if he was quiet because he was in sports he got a free pass yeah you know, true, enough, you know, what, no, true enough keep your head together no yeah, way yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that type yeah. of thing yeah yeah but um, who's your school boy team ring man I suppose ring man yeah so I was uh, I was about nine I'd say when I joined ring man uh, when the my man was getting dropped off by the taxi man one day, like, and Terry Cummins, he was the neighbour, like, and, but he also done the coach, the under, I think it was 12s at the time, but I was too young for that, so I couldn't get involved, but I remember he said, look, come down anyway and fall in or whatever, and then went down the next day for training, and so look, never looked back, like, I loved it, you know what I mean, because I'd be on the road, all, all my buddies would be two years older than me, kind of, and I'd be on the road with them, and then, like, say, whatever night it was, they'd go down to man training, and I'd, uh, I'd be like, oh, see you later, but I'd still stay out on the road playing with the ball, like, mm. and I'd be like, oh, I can't go down, there, there's the older team, I have to wait, like, but then Terry, like, pulled up, told me, fall in, like, and yeah. I did, and I ended up playing with the older team for uh, the rest of it, like, you know, so it uh, stood me in good stead. Mm. Do you think that helped your development? Yeah, massively, because, um, you know, everybody, like I said, I was the youngest, oh, I was the youngest of or I suppose your gang, like, you know, the mm-hmm. boys that you're hanging around with, they were always two, three years, some of them four years older, like. So you have to try extra hard. Or yeah, like, you know, like I remember, like, we, we this thing, we'd always be striking with the outside of our left boot and stuff, because mm-hmm. I'm r- primarily right leg, but we, we used to always be, we'd be mad practicing, like, uh, remember that Roberto Carlos free kick, where he yeah, bent it, yeah. that one. So we all were trying that, like. <laughs> and we all tried that. Yeah, like, so, like, yeah, we, 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 we got obsessed with it, yeah. like, we, um, but the older lads, like, I'm sure at the time I wasn't thinking, oh, they're older, they're just more developed, so they're stronger, so they're able to do it. In my head, I was going, how are they able to do it? And I can't do it. So you spend morning, and noon, and night kicking the ball against the wall trying to do it. Like, yeah. and, mm-hmm. like you said, it just it develops you, you know. Was it your dream to be a footballer at a young age? No, I, I never, I never, um, it was, I never actually actively stood back and thought about it. Mm-hmm. I just loved it. Like, I just carried on, and it was never, it was never a choice, you know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. everything just kind of happened. Like, Good I dream, never yeah. actually went right. I'm going to set out now, I'm going to do this, this and this to get there and do that. I just kind of kept playing, kept playing uh, ball and it just mm. developed like. Yeah, mm. and what's it, were you always in midfield? Yeah, I was always centre mid, yeah. And what's it like when you're in school, um, I always like, I, my idea now of like your League of Ireland player and you've had a long career there, but coming up through schools and school boys, I always the best on the field or is it because you're playing with all the guys, you don't really stand out, but it helps you develop better again. Yeah, um, like I always. Is there pressure on you to be the best player, yeah. like because yeah, you've always I, been grown up? Yeah, I suppose there would be. I remember them um, like that. Mm. Now, uh, in school, I missed school. Uh, I was in the Nagel at the time, so I was first year. Um, I missed school. I was um, 
I don't know, for whatever reason, but I know I wasn't, I wasn't sick. There wasn't, you know, but I was just ended up missing the day of school, but mm. there was a match on anyway. And uh, I remember the teacher sent one of the boys down to the door to, telling me to come up. He goes, look, we don't care about you missing the day. Just come up and fall in for the match. <laughs> I was like, I was there going, but well, I'm out of school. Like, I said, oh. So I ended up going up, play the match. Boys were all going back into school. I was going home because I was out, like, you know. <laughs> but, uh, that, like, like that kind of thing, like, so I suppose... There was pressure, like, like, cause I knew, I knew why he was calling me up, like, you know. Yeah. So I was going up. I knew I had yeah. to, I had to play well, or I had yeah. to, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, so there was pressure, yeah. But um, yeah, I suppose naturally there was a kind of, uh, um, I suppose there was a, there'd be a knowing, like fellas would know, like, oh, look, you kind of have a feeling anyway, you know, you'd fellas be like complimenting, you yeah, and all the rest of it, like, so you kind of had a feel, look, I must be handy enough, like, you know. And you guess, um, are you a mark man? When you're, like when you're coming up I was like that's Garo Marsh you know midfield let's say I know from when we yeah. were in school boys there was a fella for Everton Colin Fielding he was a striker and uh, our, our manager he was just saying whatever you fucking do do not give him yeah. any space yeah. you know like, yeah. like uh, when you're coming up against like let's say I know I can imagine if you were playing against Timmy <laughs> I was like Garo I give Garo Marsy Garo Marsy yeah, yeah. those fellas are going to be hard around you oh, 100% yeah. uh, it was only ever though the north side clubs are like um yeah, that was it. Do you know, like it was because Mahan and the North Side, like you had to be, yeah. you had to be hard. Yeah, there's always that rivalry. Right? Always, yeah. like so, like it's yeah. like we I remember we playing New Farm, and uh, I remember like so we were only twelves, I'd say, and I remember hearing the manager on the side. I was, I remember I was running down the wing, like, and I remember there was like two, two of the boys behind me kind of chased me. He was like roaring, crack him, crack him. I was there. That was my first time really going. Jeez, they're out, to, they're proper oh, out to get you. Like, kill me, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Don't give me the ball. <laughs> yeah, but like, I, 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 then I met fellas growing up, like, and playing the League of Ireland or whatever, and they'd tell me when they went to Mahin to play the only Mahin, they would have got the same kind of trick. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's just yeah. the way it was. Like, like Mahin were known as a tough club to yeah. play against. And a very hostile place yeah. to play as well. A tough club, like, you, yeah. you were going down there, you were getting a game off of yeah. Mahin, you know, you weren't going down there for an easy game. Yeah. Yeah. It was going to be tough. It was like what they'd call a derby in England, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It was going to be a really physical game. Yeah. You know, so... Um, I think the obvious ring man kind of has... That's just... It's in their makeup. They naturally... The boys in the area, like, just yeah. kind of naturally yeah. have that. Yeah. Whereas no, like... Like, when I was there, we... Whoever was available would manage the team. Do you know what? Whereas no, everybody has badges. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they've... So they have naturally have that. But they also have the, the, the skill set, no, yeah. to actually... Yeah coach and um, develop players even if it's even I suppose worst case scenario they're developing they're developing players for Ringman's senior team mm -hmm. you know what I mean and then best case they're developing players to move on to England and yeah. Cork City and, and you know there's a lot of success success coming out of there at the moment there is yeah, yeah. players moving on like. yeah there's a lot of it at the moment and um, do you know people see it's uh, like years ago no one would have because it costs money to get these get your coaches through their badges and all the rest of it. Yeah. Whereas now they'd look at it as a bit of an investment, like because like they're going right. We get the if we get we're going to develop the players. The players then eventually move on, you know, and it's mm -hmm. it goes full circle, you know. It it, uh, it pays dividends, like you know, mm -hmm. they end up they end up getting compensation packages from the English clubs and mm -hmm. you know all the rest of it, like. I remember when we were playing uh, school boys with no farm uh, around the team that was the best around at the time. I think it was Cove. Uh, Stephen Orland who was playing for him at the time and yeah. you could see he mm. was head and shoulders above yeah. everybody else, yeah. you know. Have you ever have you ever had that experience in school boys? Who was the best teams that you were coming up against and who's maybe the best players or did anybody really stand out to yeah? Um yeah, there would have been a few, yeah. Do you know what? It was a weird one. I remember there was a fella there with um Buttervint, it was, and it was random enough, like, you know, like uh, but I was one of these fellas, I never ever stood back and assessed the situation or like Stood back and like, oh, he's supposed to, he's supposed to be mm -hmm. this, and he's supposed to be a good player. He's, I never cared about any of that. Like mm -hmm. I suppose my dad always like whatever it was, it could be going out to school in the morning, like whatever. I said, go, go and get stuck in. So like I always had that mentality, like of just just go and get stuck in. I saw yeah. and like he, my dad would always be saying when I as that high up, like whatever, like he's only two. Do you know, arms and legs the same as you, like mm -hmm. whatever whatever you're doing, like you know. Minute, so, yeah, the minute so, you give him credit, if for. You know, the minute you give them the awe, yeah, like you lose that you, kind of. You do, yeah, yeah. You, you, and like you almost um, 
you put them on a bit of a pedestal or something. You, yeah, yeah. you, give, them an, exactly you, it, you yeah. give them an edge before you even get mm-hmm. into it with them. And then all of a sudden, you're in it with them and you're going, hang on a minute. Yeah. Like, I'm, mm. I'm holding my own here. Like, you know, there's nothing special, you know. So mm. I always had that. But I'm back to it. There was a fellow in Buttervent. actually don't know his name. We ended up at the end of, or we the team holiday a couple of years ago. And I actually bumped into him out there. And like two of us were going out just chatting about it like and I was like how random it was like he was like you don't even know me now yeah I was like I actually wouldn't believe it no but I would actually know you and your brother like I was like two yeast stuck out in my head through the whole school boys playing or whatever like you know so um yeah so that was a random enough one like yeah. but there was always players you know around you hear the odd fella hair there he's good he's good whatever like you know and then you go on to tries with for the Kennedy Cup team and all that, and you you get an eye, an eye for a few fellas you're saying, oh, like, he's with him, he's with them, he's with them, so, yeah. um, you know, you'd know, like. Do you know when you're at the, the Kennedy Cup, um, actually, for people that don't know, will you explain the Kennedy Cup? Yeah, well, yeah, so, like, it's just, it's, um, you know, it was the be-all, and then the, when we were growing up, like, I remember, like, I remember everybody saying to me, oh, Kennedy Cup, you're next year, no, Kennedy Cup, you're next year, and I was like, you know, so straight away, I was building up, like, I was going, fuck, Kennedy Cup must be, must be serious, yeah. like, but, um, you know, it's, huge tournament the best players you know generally like I know one or two might not get picked for whatever reason or they might slip mm. through the net like so generally the best players are there like I know one or two maybe you always think oh he should have been there he and probably should have too but players develop later yeah do you know I've, I've seen that tempo I done a zoom call earlier today and I was I was telling him like he was like what well, would you say to young fellas like I was like just stick at it whatever it is I goes no matter what it is, I goes as long as you're, you know, as long as you're at it, you're sticking at it, stick with it. Because I know players who I would have never said they're going to earn a living out of this. Like I would have never said it, and like it could be whatever five, six years later, I see them, they're still at it, and they're earning a living. They're actually, they're actually after becoming mm-hmm. really good players. Whereas yeah. in me as a young fella, like I'd be like, oh no, I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. He's not. I wouldn't. He's not really good. Like you yeah, know what I mean. Yeah, but the yeah. fact they've the resilience by and the perseverance just to keep going with it and yeah. keep at it. That's that's half it, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I think yeah. there's there's a certain uh, risk as well, you know, when young players get into the Kennedy Cup, which is around fourteen, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's fourteen now, it's thirteen. And even in, in this day and age, no, they're playing League of Ireland mm-hmm. on the thirteens and the fifteens, there's an element of I've made it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And then for the young fellas that don't get picked for Cox City and Shemrock uh, yeah, at that saying, age, yeah. there's an element of Oh, I'm no good. I'm going to yeah. try something else, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's just so much more time to oh, develop. Oh, it's unbelievable. And for and I've seen it myself because I followed my nephews with playing with Cox City underage and Corinthians and Cove Ramblers and stuff like that. But I've seen fellas come and playing with them that were lesser players than them, but are probably doing better today. Yeah. And fellas that were better players than them, but are doing worse today. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it's, it, it's very hard to manage, isn't it? It is. If you look at look at Roy Keane, Roy Keane didn't go off thing long. He was eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. He just didn't give up, as you mm. said. Yeah. There, he probably wasn't picked for some stuff there, like Kennedy Cup teams back then or whatever it may yeah, have been. Yeah, hundred percent. But he kept going. He knew his dream was that he wanted to be a professional footballer. Yeah. Kept going, kept training, training after training. Do you know all 100%. these different things? Yeah. And he kept, he went on to be probably he's, one of the best players that we ever produced. He's in this probably country. the that's the prime example of it, like you know? isn't it? Like yeah. this fella just sticking at it. And like you talked to more, I know Roy was brilliant, like in the you know the Premier League and that when you're watching him. But like you talked to a lot of fellas and they'd be saying, oh sure, and even like probably not, his brother was supposed to be better. All these yeah, kind of things, yeah, you know. Yeah, like so, he yeah. wasn't not he wasn't unbelievable, mm. like. But yeah. he just he just perfected it like he stuck yeah. at it and he just um like you said but he just kept going and got I, there like I personally loved his determination you know yeah yeah just and his energy around the team as yeah. a leader yeah. because I would have visualized myself as being something similar no not as good as a player but a, a leader you had that just, mindset like but I just loved you know to for the team to win yeah you know just to, the passion of it yeah, about the yeah. football it wasn't about anything else it was about just winning and, 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 and you know, just being there for the, the, the rest of the players and pushing them on and, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. instead of throwing them, oh, not all the time, but throwing them a few fucks here and there because yeah, they're yeah. giving them a bit of confidence. Yeah. You know, it's very important for even the, the, the coaches, coaching young players today, watch what they're saying to the players on the fields, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because if they start shouting and effing and roaring at them, the confidence is just gone. Yeah. It's gone, and I know this now from my own experience. But if they say, "Listen, come over, give me a chance. Yeah. Listen, you're doing well. Listen, yeah. just get it up, step it up a little bit yeah. more. Just put a little bit more energy. If you're not able today, just let me know. We'll put on somebody yeah. else. You yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. things like that instead of what the 
Yeah. Do you know all this kind of shit? It really that's, destroys that's, players. That's something I noticed out in Corinthians when my nephews, my nephews are from Halley Hill, but they played school boys with Corinthians, which is in Douglas, obviously. But something I noticed straight away when they went out there was there's no screaming at the children. And it was all mm. encouragement and yeah. play out from the back and if you make a mistake, that's okay. You know, that type of thing, mm. like what Timmy is saying. So, it's old, that's an old school thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Just roaring at them. And, yeah. Do you know, yeah. what, like, I can't focus in with the hairdryer treatment type thing. Like, that's different. Like, fellas <laughs> then on the line down the school white team took that as the way to I do know. it. Like, but with children. He's, <laughs> he's, he's dealing with grown fully Grown developed men yeah. and they're you know they're professional and you know and they're on a hundred thousand like, a week uh, yeah. yeah do you know <laughs> like the, so like the, yeah. but um yeah that's i i totally agree with that mm. i think um you know you're it's like you've you've a, a huge um responsibility when you're coaching like you know and you're you're not just developing the the player like it's people you're developing like so mm. you have them for so many hours a week whatever you if you're there if you're the manager you've them for so many hours like the good you can do, mm-hmm. you can impact their lives for that, that few hours a week, you know what yeah. I mean? And you can help bring them on level, like, and just, just in terms of people, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And mm-hmm. then, the football, if you're developing players too, sure, like, that's great then, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And you could have children on your team that they're probably being screened at right. home 24 hours of the day. The last thing they want <laughs> is to come into training and then they're being screened at and the matches. The child then is constant negativity. Yeah, you know what I mean? no, I'm just laughing now because I, do you know, I remember growing up and I remember going through what, do you know, you could, <laughs> course, could, yeah. have came out, could have been in your friend's house, could have, or come out of your house, mum and dad could have had a row down to the, yeah. down to the pitch, and the coach is at it, you're going to ever catch a uh, break, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. do you know? Um, you but I don't blame you fellas, and no one there after yeah. coming out of a house. You're wondering then why you got a red card that Yeah, day. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, stop. See, yeah. fellas, come out of a house, you just know like he's after having a rough night. Yeah. Now, like, the head is down, the head is down, and he's walking on. You're going, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, um, you, you made your way into the League of Ireland. Yeah, what, I did. What, 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 was it, what was it like making the step up? Um, do you know what? It was kind of, um, it was more the step to England was was it for me because that that was the big, geez, like, this is serious. Like, this mm. is not just, it's not a game of ball anymore. It's actually when I was kind of, I stopped enjoying it and I was like, start, uh, no, I wasn't like, you know, I think staying depressed or any of that. I was never, none of that. But I was down on myself. Like, I was mm. like, I carried myself. My, I remember a fella saying to me one day, he was like, lift, lift your shoulders, like, lift your head up. I, but like, I was only knowing, realizing what the way I look, thinking back, I was moping around. Like, and um, it was because of that though. Like, it was because I suppose life got really serious for me really quickly. Mm. Like, you know, something you love to do. Um, you know, and you you get nothing but enjoyment from it. And then all of a sudden it became, uh, like you said, very serious and very professional, like, you know. Um, mm. So I was 16 when that happened, so like... Where did you go? I went to Blackburn at the time. They were in the Premier League at the time, so it was a huge move for me. So I was like, geez, and did a couple of, you know, they had a couple of stars playing for him, like, and, uh, you know, I went there and I was, and Paul Ince was the manager, Mark Hughes was the manager, and he, he just left as I was coming and Paul Ince came in, like, um, and Mark Hughes is always known for developing young players. Yeah, so that was part of my decision to go to Blackburn. Like, yeah. so um, I just I I just signed, and I think uh, I don't know who they got after that, but it might have been Villa or someone. But so, uh, I just signed, and someone came in, or he he left just as I came in. Like, and then Paul Ince came in. Look, he was good too. But um, uh, yeah, but that's where that's where I found it was like, geez, this is unbelievable. Like, this is um. You know, it took me a long, long time to get my head around the actual what's required, like, you know. Mm. Um, and I ended up staying there for a year and seven months. I had another year and a bit left of my contract, but I ended, I said to him, look, I don't want to, I wanted to go home. Like, I was living out of my suitcase, so mm. I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't unpack because if I unpacked, even though I was there a year and seven months now, if I unpacked, it meant I'm living there, yeah. like, I couldn't give in to it. Were you homesick? Uh, oh, completely, like, I was, I couldn't, um... I, I never accepted the fact that I I lived in England, you know. I couldn't get my head around it. Uh, so in the long run, it was like it was detrimental to me because I was like the football. I didn't start performing until the end of my time at Blackburn because I stopped. I just about stopped thinking about it, and um, I put enough good performances in to get Blackburn. Like you're in the academy building, which is at the bottom of say the area, and then. The first team and reserves are at the top, so I put I put a string of performances together and I got moved up to the first team building. So I was no reserve player. So like the academy is behind you then, like kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Unless you underperformed it, you go back down. So um, 
that's what I done like and uh, I just uh, like when I went up to the resort building oh yeah so I spent your week growing men like mm. spent a lot of time on my own because their families are yeah. um, even the lads who didn't have families were young like me the majority of them went home for the weekend they were all British mm -hmm. so they all went wherever it was they went and I'd be there isolated, in, in, isolated by myself and just nothing but the, the digs was on the training ground there was house parents there but they were the house parents of a lodge so like it was just like a dormitory like just bedrooms everywhere and they had a tiny little apartment kind of thing mm. so like you'd very you'd maybe once a day you'd interact with them if that and on the weekend you might even interact with them at all you know so um i found that very difficult and that's in the end that's what led to me ending up going to cork because i was like look uh I, i'm gonna go home or whatever so i ended up coming home um Roddy Collins was the manager here at the time with Cork City and he wanted to get me on loan but I wanted to make it permanent so it ended up becoming permanent and um, that was the, the start then with City like and we like, I just signed with City and Roddy gave me a great contract for a young fella like I was mm -hmm. he was paying me a good wage and all the rest and I was going Jesus is great I'm really going to be living at home and whatever and then um, I remember like because the club was going through a rough period and he said um, no look it's sorted now it's everything's grand and then it must have been I see I was like grand went down signed the contract signed the release contract with Blackburn um, I was like that's grand now so I put to bed happy days 6 o'clock news came on Cork City's gone into liquidation I was like what I was like so that was that so, but you know what it, it, it was probably in the long run it was probably good for me because I don't if they kept all their players that they had at that time I might not have got in like I might not have been I might have been on the bench for uh, who knows how long and then I could have you don't know what could have happened you know it's kind of similar situation for the young lads today isn't it when yeah it is Cox City and financial difficulty doesn't it just forces them to use the young players 100% and then um, you know you either you either sink or swim you mm -hmm. like you either stand up and be counted or you fade away mm -hmm. like and that's mm -hmm. what happens and you find them majority of fellas stand up and be counted and mm -hmm. they they a, a season a season all of a sudden they're after coming on as if they've played five or six seasons because they're actually put in and relied upon you know what I mean it's yeah. not just oh I come off the bench there and we're up we're winning 3-0 yeah. it's like we're bringing you on here you need, or you're starting we need you to do something here like you know what I mean yeah. straight away then it brings you on a couple of levels like did yeah. you ever did you ever regret your decision to, to leave Blackburn oh I did yeah, yeah. I, do you know I'd say most most weeks like it would, well not most weeks but no, not now anyway like what it would come into my head like because I'd be saying what if, if I'd yeah. only if, like I came home in February if I only had stuck it until the summer I could have I would have been I would have been um, what was it, my third year over there mm -hmm. I think you I would have been allowed to uh, get my own place and you know uh, mm -hmm. my, you know my girlfriend could have came over and lived mm -hmm. with me and mm -hmm. I could have actually lived there properly like and mm -hmm. um not just be, I, I was there, but I wasn't living there, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was just training and going back to my bedroom most days, like, and it's not good for anyone, like, you know, yeah, so yeah. I was so close to getting to that, um, but I couldn't see the wood for the trees, it was, my mind was just, yeah. I want to go home, you know what I mean? It's when you're lonely like that and you're, you're isolated as well, like, because everybody's gone on the weekends, mm. uh, it can be tough for anybody. Yeah, it, it can it was, really I be tough, remember, like. even now, looking back at it, I think, how did I do it for so long? Yeah. Like, even the, the, uh, being on your own, like constantly, like and just mm. you wouldn't be getting home that much. Um, yeah, look, it was it was extremely. I mean, looking better for it now, like you know, exactly. it gave me a bit of grit and a bit of resilience. Mm. And you know, it's it's good to go what through something it? and just tough it out too for a while, like exactly. you know. And what good is it being being with Blackburn or any other club if you're not happy? Yeah, you know no, that's I mean? true. What's the point? Like, it is. The, the enjoyment is gone from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, if you're yeah. there and you're unhappy, you're not enjoying your football. It's that's all that matters, you know. And there's. There's nothing wrong with coming back and playing for home city either, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and, and yeah. the pride and that comes with that. That's it, like and you know, I suppose it's a it's it's almost like um it's the enjoyment part of it goes out the window when the financial side mm. comes in or something, it's like um yeah. do you know I'm with business like Yeah, and with Blackburn like it's like, do you know, you could have so much in your bank account had you done this as opposed to this kind of a thing. But um at the end of the day, like the stage I was at, I was like I'm I'm not happy with it. Like mm. you know, I couldn't I couldn't move on. I couldn't even the thoughts of sticking it out another week or whatever. I couldn't have done it. Like you know, it's just mm. the way I was. And I remember I came home and um you know I end up uh, you know falling out. With, you know my dad was trying to get through to me. Look, you're you're this close to this happening and that happening. Like you know, try try and stick it out or whatever. But couldn't do it. Like you know, I just um and no, I wish I had seen why he was he had. You know, he was looking at it from 
Do you know a bit of force that he could see what what's about to come if you just could. But you're only a young fella. That's, and that's the mean? problem. Like you're you're that age. Like you're only. I was nearly eighteen. I was eighteen at the time. So I was like, but I was there so long and it was gone so far. I was like, do you know what? No, I was like, I couldn't. Um, I couldn't even engage mm-hmm. in a conversation about it because I was just didn't want to know about it. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. Do you know? And then I think he. I think then my dad said he was worried, thinking. Is he packing in football completely kind of thing? But that was mm. never on my mind. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, I oh, just wanted, I didn't know I was joining Cork properly then. But like, so he was going, what are you, what are you going to do? And like, you know, are you going, going working on what's the story? Like, and, um, it, you know, it, it, would have been, it would have been a pity if I ended up just coming back and just going working when I worked so hard, I suppose. And you know, I had that. Like, invested in yeah, it. Yeah, a lot. And like, the, into fair, fairness to my yeah. mum and dad. And, um, everyone like you know they put a lot of, they, you know they give it everything with me like you know and made sure I had everything to you know just boots and all the rest of it and all the, all the rest of it that goes with it you know so yeah. there was a lot went into it um, but look I ended up coming back and um, to be honest with you I, I know like I don't really look back because I'm like I had a great since I've come back to Cork it's been nothing but um, positive and I know I know yeah. we've had a couple of bad years there or whatever but yeah. still positive because I'm going in every day to train and Smile on my face, happy out, um, do you know, living in Cork, um, do you know, able to see family and friends all the yeah. time, you know, there's, there's a lot yeah. to be said for it, like. Of course, yeah. and uh, something that always, or that often struck me around uh, League of Ireland players, especially in the big clubs like Cork City, where you could go to Turner's Cross, you could have seven or eight thousand, you could make play in Europe more seasons, um, at least every other season, um, and players in that situation then that leave to go to... Uh, um, small clubs in England. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, is it is there even way more money in the small clubs in England than there is in League of Ireland? Um, and is it the draw of if you go to England, even if it is with a small club in League One or League Two, you could still get mm. that that big break. You know, like, you you might get a big draw in the FA Cup in the Premier League, and you might get seen. Then is that kind of the draw? Yeah, yeah. Like I went to Cambridge. Uh, League two. Let me one second. Did you play at Old Trafford in the FA Cup? Yeah, so that I was that was my that, debut, so. like, yeah. um, <laughs> unbelievable, like, so like that. No, like you say, there is a draw. Like I know it's I was in this small club, Cambridge League Two. Left, it's kind of a sideways move, really. Like you know, yeah. but um, it's the fact that you're in the pool, like, and like yeah. you said, there's there's the the potential to like, you know, all you have to do like is put string of performances together. All of a sudden, you could end up in the championship, and then yeah. you know. Uh, then you do you do a bit there. You could be playing the Premier League, you know. So yeah. there's always that. Like where look at Shea Adams at, at Sheffield United today and Jamie Vardy, like yeah. they grounded out in the lower leagues and they yeah. had a break. Do you know what I mean? Conor Horan, like yeah. Conor Horan was. Uh, I would have played with him the whole way up with Kennedy Cup teams and all the rest of it. Like and um, I remember he left Sunderland. He went to Ipswich with Keane and then he kind of fizzled away. Ended up uh, was a Plymouth. They were in League Two. Um, and then, you know, they ended up getting promoted. He stayed with them the whole way up. Then he had, he, he had a move and he just climbed the whole way up and look at him now. And the, like, I know he's on known as Swansea now, but he's yeah. a Premier League player, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He's yeah. just unlucky. They kind of brought in Ross Barkley. They did, and, and they, Barty, ha- they have to play him. Like, yeah. there's, there's a lot of that in England. Like, um, mm-hmm. like, even Cambridge there, like, you could have, you could be training all week. You could be the best player in training all week. And all of a sudden, like, if the window is open, there's a lone player from Man United that comes in. And like the only reason he's there is because the manager would have agreed with his agent and the parent club, say United or whoever. Mm-hmm. Look, if he play, if he comes, he'll play every week. Like they'll, and that's the only way they'd get a player yeah, from okay. a caliber of club like that. So you could have been the best player in training all week. You could have man the match before that, and then all of a sudden he you come you rock up on a Saturday to play the match. There's some new fella sitting there. And you're like oh whatever. And the manager calls up the team. He's starting instead of you, and you're going. Yeah. There's a lot of that in England, like you, you know, lose half there straight away or faith in the team and the manager, couldn't you? Oh, you personally. that's what happens. Like mm. it's not as um, uh, it's not as personal over there. Like it's very business. It's yeah. very you know. Whereas here, like you would have like I have really good relationships with the in the management now and the management before and you know even the staff around the place and everyone like. But in England, it's um. You're a, you you genuinely feel you're a product like you know you're mm. like when that happens like there's people coming and going all the time like yeah. you know yeah, yeah. I remember uh, 
touching on Roddy Collins just before we move on. Remember, he went over to Carlisle managing them and he did like a League of Ireland 11. Yeah. He brought in a lot of Irish fellas over there now. From one, like, <laughs> what the fuck are they doing over there? Yeah, yeah. Some of them were good players, like and playing with you know, solid players in League of Ireland, like, but there is always the draw, like you could get United in the FA Cup, you could get fucking yeah, do you know, so Liverpool in yeah. the League Cup, you know, you would yeah. never get that when you're playing League of Ireland. You don't, like, don't like, so like, like I made that move to Cambridge that time and uh, how was that? It was difficult, like because when, just before uh, when I went, um, I was after hurting my knee in training. When the lads attacked me in training, because I'd done my knee, so I was out for about three months. Um, and then when I when I was going over, there, I said to the CEO, like I was like, look, um, it was the CEO and the chief scout who signed me. So the manager never even seen me play. And um, it's just the chief scout and the CEO kind of overruled him, like to see, and that was that. So he kind of, he wasn't happy with that either, you know. So he had to kind of, he, he, you know, he didn't yeah. take to me then over that straight away. Like he didn't even try really. Um, and that wasn't even your fault, like. Yeah. So I, I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, and you that's know? just the way it is. But I said to him, look, I'm going to have to do a pre-season when I, when I sign here. Like, is that right? I'm going to need at least a, a month. Like of just me flat out running and getting up to the level the lads are at. I was like, yeah, no problem, whatever. Like, as soon as I signed, um, I straight in training with the boys. Uh, sure, they were in the middle of a season. January, they were in the middle of a season. They were fit as it gets. Mm-hmm. So I was basically not training for three months and then going straight into it with them. Like he was setting you up for failure. Really so like we straight up that, but like I was, I I thought I was genuinely getting a month of pre season and then um. Someone came in to me the day before we were supposed to play. They were like, "You're playing. You're starting tomorrow." And I was like, "Starting?" I was like, "What?" I was only I was only trained twice. And he was like, "Yeah, you're starting tomorrow." And I was like, "Grand." When they trained, pulled my grind. I was like, "Do you know what?" I was like, "It was a godsend because yeah. I would have been a shambles. I would have been shocking. You know what I mean?" Yeah. And then straight away, like, I would have been like you said, no, like I would have been discredited. Like he, yeah. that was the manager would have put me in. And then it would have looked like... He was trying to prove a point. Yeah, so there's, a, so there's yeah. low, that's when people, you know, people are like, oh, the politics or whatever. And I know there's a lot of, there is a, there is a bit goes on, like, you yeah. know, certain clubs do do things different now and it might run smoother, but, like, there's a lot of that goes on, like... And, ran about um, yeah. Arsenal there, you know, recently, uh, William. Yeah. Right, he's been brutal since he joined Arsenal. And it's like, uh, every time Mikel Arteta plays him in the start line, it's like he's saying it to the CEO, like... This is all I have, do you know what I mean? And I think that's a bit of an element of what you experienced. Yeah, yeah 100%. You know? Like, I don't like this player, and I'm going to put him in a shitty situation that yeah. I know is not going to work for him. Yeah. Do you know, just to force the hand. We, he done that. We played Dagenham. Um, we played Dagenham. T- so, oh yeah, but, but to f- finish up on what I was saying yeah. about Cambridge, it was, it, it didn't go well like that way. I know I got injured. I was basically injured until the summer. Went home for the summer. Um, Got myself in great shape, went back. I was one of the fittest players. I was, in my mind, looking at it and the hype that I, I performed the best in the pre-season, like, you know what I mean? Out of the midfielder, everyone in my position, I was the most consistent. And there were, the media started, uh, in Cambridge, local media, like, started creating a bit of hype about it. Like, you know, mm. and I was going, geez, I'm on here. Like, this is going to be, this is going to be brilliant. It's actually going, starting to work now in my favour. It's actually going to be all right. But, um, so I thought I was starting, played, uh, we the, the first game coming up and the manager was like, Look, you'll be you and another fellow you're starting next week, whatever. I was like, Brilliant. Next week came game, I was on the bench, I was going, Jeez, he brought me on. I set up a goal, I was going, Right, I'm assuming now for next week, like he, he brought me on, I done something good. Um didn't see a ball then for about must have been three months, didn't play like then we had dagging him in the in the cup coming up. But we the lads who haven't played now, like have you know, you're losing fitness because you're losing match fitness, the whole lot, your sharpness, everything is going like um so we dagged him coming up and then he started everybody basically who he'd kind of bombed off for the last three months or whatever, played us. We were shocking. Um, we lost something like 3-0. And I remember then he came out and he was like, I don't want one of you knocking on my door again saying that you should be playing. But basically, like, he created that situation for us to, do you know, man. so like that's what happened. And then after that, then um, I kind of, I was on to Cots, the assistant manager now. Um, you know, I'd have a good relationship with him, so I was on to him. I was like, look, this, what's the story with Cork? Like, and he was like, you interested in coming back or whatever? I was like, yeah. So then um, he kind of lined that up for me, and, um, you know, I haven't looked back. Yeah. Fair yeah. player. 
But that sounds tough. tough mental, tough like. Game, isn't it? Yeah. What kind of goes on? It's all head games, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot no, of that chat. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I wouldn't fancy that no at all. Yeah, like, it's that it, would kind of be a little trigger for me, like for anger to be treated like that when you're really, really mm. putting in the effort. That, and that's it. That's your best. what the the resilience and ability, yeah. you know, you kind of I suppose like you, you don't get me wrong, Nick. You get you do get pissed off and you mm-hmm. you end up you do fall out like I remember, I remember you know, falling out with a few fellas over it like because you're just on edge like you're pissed off you're in the shitty you're mm-hmm. in bad form you're you know it's just mm-hmm. it's just not a good um it's not a it's not right to be treated like that but in professional sport man it's just yeah. for some reason or whatever like it's just it's just mm-hmm. how it goes sometimes like and it's just accepted like you know yeah if uh, we change angle this morning but you're from Mahan we're from uh, the north side um. Similar in terms of just some sort of social issues, drug use and, and addiction and stuff like that. We've both been in addiction. Um, you've had a family member in addiction. Um, you, I suppose, growing up, you would have went down one path, and you would have, you would have had people your own age would have went down another path. Do you think that the sports was instrumental in keeping you on the straight and narrow? And do you think that for fellas not involved in sport, they are at a much higher risk of getting caught up in the madness? Yeah, a hundred percent. Sport, like I said, no. F- like when we were talking mm-hmm. earlier, there, like the older fellas on the street or whatever, like that. I could have potentially fall into the same routine that some of my friends did. Say, but I was kind of I was looked after. Like the boys knew I was I was um I was was I was excelling at football. Like and it was mm-hmm. it was starting to be known. Like you know people were talking saying, "Geez, he's." I was a tra- you know there were scouts at the matches and stuff like and the boys knew they were there for me and so like it come the weekend then and the boys are hanging around by the shops and whatever else and the older lads would be like to me like or they might even they might even knock on my door like and say to my dad like listen he's up around the shop there or whatever like yeah mm-hmm. you know keep him don't let him hang around up there or whatever I might only be up there now kicking the wall against the wall with the lads like but that's how it, mm-hmm. you know and then all of a sudden the lads have other ideas and you fall in with that then you're you know you're on that path you know mm-hmm. if you kept going with it whereas i was looked after like and um i suppose my dad was very good like he'd he'd always like be like right we're going to go for a run out tomorrow like me my, me my brother tom and he'd be like uh, i've saw my older brother paul he so there was paul there was tom in in the middle and there was me so like paul was kind of working and he's the oldest so he was kind of and he was responsible like he looked after himself you know he knew what to do like mm. whereas i was young so i needed to be minded and then there was tom like he was off the wall so he was like any chance my dad could get a grip of him and keep keep him grounded and keep uh, keep eyes on him and just give him a bit of focus he would like so he'd bring us run like the summer whenever the summer uh off school whenever we were off school for the summer he'd bring us run every morning like and you know uh, i remember two of us like me and Tom be getting up with a bit like, come on, get up, we're gonna go down for a run. And uh, down to the field and we'd bring a ball, like we'd have a kick about like and um me and Tom be getting up, we'd give an old stink like we're like this fucking shit now again like, <laughs> like bit like he's probably hung over and I was just getting dragged out of bed. So I was going, Dose, like this is a disaster. Like then I remember now looking back, it's my fondest memory, like you know, mm-hmm. I loved it. Mm-hmm. You know, I even even then doing it, I think I was only giving up because he was giving out. I was actually delighted to be up and at it with him like <laughs> and you know doing something like but um that's what it was. So any chance uh, my dad could he he keep us in a bit of focus like that, or we were in boxing. He'd he'd have us training for that. Like we'd a bag in the house, so you know it could be Friday. I wouldn't even know it's a Friday night, but I'd, he'd be like, "Come on, we got a couple of rounds in the bag." And um, you know that was fr- Friday night's gone then before you know it or whatever yeah. you know. So like he he was good at that. Like he'd yeah. he'd stare you that way. Like but um, you know they're still like you know Tom obviously went in another way still, but um, you know because. You can't cont- you can't stop yeah. any people doing no. what they want to do or what they're going to do like you know. Yeah. All all you can really do, Garrod, really is, is as a parent is is do your best and just hope hope that everything will be okay with your kids. Yeah. You know, and it, like even in my own situation, but my own kids, like me and my wife, we try to do our best. You know, and what we're able to do and what we can do, um, and hope that things will be okay. You know, like your your father, your like what I, my point is is. Um, from listening to you, your father sounds like he was a f- fantastic parent growing up. Mm. Yeah, you know he he really put time into his kids. Like yeah, no, he really did. In fairness, you know, um, so, so um, he was a little bit about your brother Tom. What yeah. kind of a character was he? Just so, like um, you couldn't meet a nicer fella. Do you know there was no there was no macho shit with him. There was no uh, even though he was with all the boys on the road and um, like when it, like fighting and all that kind of crack when it came to any of that like. 
bravest fella I you'd ever see in your life. Like he mm. was, like I said, no, we were in boxing, like and he was in box. So I suppose that's where the confidence would have yeah. came from too. So never, never was it like there was always something happening on the road, like or somewhere else. And do you know there was, do you know the way it is? Mm. Like you just things happen, especially like man up around the shops is where most yeah. of it would have went down because the pubs were up there, lads hanging around drinking at the back of it, all the rest of it, like. Mm. Um, so he was always involved in something though like he'd be quiet as a mouse like he'd be sitting there like and you think you think like butter wouldn't melt kind of thing like and then you know the amount of, you hear the stories then that, he, that are coming from the, the road like jeez Tom was up there back of the shops or whatever fighting that and you're going what like you're like where's that coming from like but yeah. uh, I suppose like he was um, just sound as forever and you know like when it came to the drugs and all that kind of stuff I would have never said he's an addict or any of that and I would even know like I know I know that there's there's different there's all different types of everything like but um, I never seen him like you know like desperate for drugs or drink or anything like that Mm. it was almost like he could have happily sat there in his own company and not you could there was no like for a fella looking for like if a fella was looking for drugs or whatever if he needed drugs kind of thing he'd be you know, bad form, all that kind of stuff. There was none of that with him. Like it was just almost when he went out on the road and with the way of the boys, um, he just went with it. He just went with the flow and like, mm. um, he was the type of fella he he'd keep going with it. Then like they mm. might stop themselves and go away home or whatever. Like, but he he when he was gone, he was gone. Like he might go missing for three days. Like Sounds and then like then he then he turn up. Like and mm. where were you? Or you might get a phone call. I seen Tom's in so and so's house there the last few days or something, do you know? Mm. So that's the way it was. But um I'd say you were worried sick at home at this, those days when he's out missing. Yeah, my that geez, like he was my brother, so I I never worried too much. Like I was like, ah, he's grand, you know, he's yeah. your brother's your brother, like you mm. think ah, he's well able. But I'd say for my mum and dad they must have been in like yeah. I remember the stress, like I remember how how tense the house was when he was do you know, when he was out and stuff, because you know what, there was always the fear of the worst case scenarios, like in um do you know what the the stress it caused them? I can only imagine, like you know, and and it did, like you know, they were, you know, you could, you shouldn't. It's very hard for a parent to have to, you know, my mum and dad to keep keep um, do you know how are you meant to get on with your life when you're constantly worried about what's I going, know. what's coming, and what's going, you know? So it and was very tough for them. In Ireland, as people, we have a we we have a thing about thinking about the worst thing possible. Yeah. You know what could happen to them? You know, as, as parents and stuff like that. You know, we 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 have we'll think that they're gonna this is gonna happen to them, you know, and sometimes it does, yeah. you know, and sometimes something really really bad happens, yeah. you know, because. But you hear all the time about young fellas in that situation, like we would have been mm. young fellas getting stabbed, young fellas being in car crashes, fellas getting caught for all sorts of stuff, you know. So that's like I I I'm not a parent, but my two parents would have been like that, mm. you know, like worried yeah. sick, whereas James waiting for the knock on the door, is it a guard, is it a priest, that type of thing, yeah. you know. I can imagine, like, what it must be like for a parent in that yeah, situation. Yeah, I know. You know. It's only now that I'm older, like, yeah. I put myself in their shoes and I'm going, jeez, that must have been awful, like, you know. Yeah. But, um, but like, I went back to, like, kind of, fella Tom was, like, he would be, there was no, um, there was never badness in him, mm. even though he, he'd end up in the height of these situations, like, but he was never mean, never, uh, like, Never bully, none of that kind of stuff, like, you know, mm. but, um, like, he just done s- silly shit now, like, you know, like, you'd be going, like, I, the next day I'd be looking at him, like, I'd be up in the room, like, with him, after he's after, like, he knows when he goes down the stairs, he's dead, like, and I'd be up there, I'd be like, why did you do that? I'm like, what, how did you, how did you manage that? Like, do you know, I remember one Christmas Eve, there's some fella knocked at the door, and he was like, is Tom there? I'm like, what, what, what? Uh, my dad was at the door, I was like, yeah, yes, he was wrong, he was like, he robbed my dog last night, we were like, you robbed your dog. <laughs> Tom was up in the bed with me, like in the room. He was going, Oh God. I used to, he goes, I can't. He was like, I didn't. He was like, I didn't. He goes, You did? He, he, your man, when the neighbors had uh, expensive dogs, now they were two grand a dog kind yeah. of thing. Like he was breeding them. We had a few of them. He, Tom on the way home jumped out his back, robbed the dog, went to the other side of Manhattan, and sold him for 20 euro. Do you know what? Yeah. Stupid shit, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's the like, type of thing you do when you're under the influence of yeah. drinking drugs. Yeah, 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 there's yeah, no yeah. sense to it, like. Yeah. yeah. That's no. what it was like, and he'd wake up the next day then and Cringy. back to himself, like, and you'd be going, what are, we, what are you doing? Like, and do you know, we'd be like, when we talk about it now, like, uh, along the family, like, we'd be in stitches at the stuff he got up mm. to, like, because there was none of it, like, that, no, like, none of it, there was no bad, badness in it, kind of, if you know what I mean, you yeah. know what I mean? There was no, um, 
it was just silly, like, it was just stupid, it's, silly it's, shit, it's, like. You know? It sounds that like my own story, to be honest mm. with you. Mm. It was all fucking stupid stuff. There was never any mad criminality or organised yeah, yeah, crime or anything yeah, like yeah. that. It was just like, out of your head doing stupid stuff and then going and ending up in trouble at home and in the courts and stuff. But there was no sense to it. And no. my, my mother and my father would be coming to visit me in car prison and I used to be cringing inside, like, hearing of the, the, the things I was after doing, like, no memory mm. of because taking so many tablets and drinking is like why did you do that there's actually no reason there's no sense to it I can't, I can't give you that there's no yeah, rational yeah, explanation yeah. it's just madness yeah, yeah it is it's pure madness but um, it, it took his life in the end it did yeah uh, and you know what it was like so like I was talking the other way like my dad would get a grip of him mm. for so many weeks and he'd be on the, you know uh, you anytime you come into the house then he'd be like Tom's doing great and always uh, you know he'd be, mm. he'd be bigging him up to you like he'd be yeah. like he's flying you know he'd be like oh yeah that's brilliant always the job and uh, so once that's how it led to him dying like he he, he had a grip of him for so long so he, he must have been three months he didn't go didn't act along with the boys wasn't, ta- wasn't taking drugs wasn't drinking um, or he could have even had he might have even the odd time I might have went yeah. drinking in the house or something, but it was all controlled and it was grand, you know. Um, but uh, I think what happened was, if if he was on the street, he, he what happened in the end anyway, his system was so clean, mm-hmm. I reckon he went, he just went back out with the boys Talent after three done. months. And he just, he fell in where he left off thinking, mm-hmm. but the boys never, the boys were still at it, you know what I mean? So he ended up uh, overdosing then, like, you know, and that was that, like, you know. Mm-hmm. So... Do you know, my dad got a grip from for the three months and kept him on the straight and narrow and then he, he got out the door and he fell back in where he left off, you know, and like, like that, like, there was nothing calculated about it, like, he, yeah. uh, do you know, even even as a drug user, yeah. he he wouldn't even think about what he was doing, do you know, he wouldn't, yeah. it was just, oh yeah, no, but I'll, I'll take that, I'll do that, do you know, it was just go up the floor with him, like, yeah. so if the fella next to him was taking this amount of something, he'd do the exact same, mm-hmm. do you know, he wouldn't be like, no, oh, look, I, I've... I haven't uh, done that in a long time, no, so yeah. I'll take a small bit or stuff. There was none of that with him. It was just in for a penny, in for a pound, you know? Yeah, because people forget, like, that when you're sober and there's no drugs in your system for a period of the time, your tolerance goes way down. And I've been in that situation myself where um, a couple of times where I've got out of prison, I got out of a rehab and relapsed on the day um, and overdosed because you're taking the amounts I was taking before I went into prison. Yeah. But that tolerance has gone away down mm, and yeah. waking up in the mercy and waking up in the CUH not realising how you got there and how close you actually were to death. Yeah. Because there's times where I've overdosed where people have found me and I was being very lucky, do you know what I mean? But sometimes people aren't lucky. Yeah. He had a couple of them ones too. I remember when we were in England and him getting a phone call, he'd, uh, he was in hospital, he'd overdosed. And, you know, that was the first time, like, I'd say I was genuinely freaked and I was going, fuck, like, this is... Mm. All the other shit he'd done, I did, like, it never worried me. Like, I was like, all right, he's mm. well able. Like, you know, he'd mind himself. Like, but, um... Then I was going, geez, that's all I had now, like, you know, and I found out then, like, so, so many other occasions, he, it, it was so close to overdose and then, you know, the rest of it, like, mm. so, um, yeah, and then in the end, look. It, it takes it, up all your peace, doesn't it, Garrod, all your peace of mind when you have someone in addiction like that? It does, yeah. You know, it takes up all of your peace, like, because you're potentially waiting for that knock on the door yeah. or that phone call, as Jim said earlier, like, and it's... it's it's a sad thing to live with. It is, it is. It is a sad thing. To, what age was he when he died? He was 25. So 25. He, he died on the 21st of July. He was 20, he would have been 26 the following month. So yeah, 25, 26 now. Where, where were you at that time? Uh, were you Do you know what? No, I was with City. We had, um, we were, we just finished training on a Friday and it's the weirdest thing ever. We were playing Sligo. We would normally play on a Friday. We were playing Sligo and it was city were just getting going again financially and all the rest of it like so um they just got uh oh we, we were traveling up the, normally go up to Sligo the night before but obviously this time they were it was when they were just getting the club going and stuff again and um, tommy dunn was the manager so we we're going up on the saturday and it was it was um we finished training on the friday and i remember sitting on the couch me and my missus we lived with um eve my, my wife we lived with her sister at the time and uh I remember just sitting on the couch after the train and we're like, come on, we go to the beach. Like, um, and I was like, do you know what? I was like, I won't mind going to the beach because normally I would do nothing on a Friday. Like, mm. the day before a game, I'd do nothing. Like, but I was like, I'd go out to the beach. I was like, it'd be good for my legs. I was like, we'd go into the water or whatever. But I, I was the weirdest thing. And I know, like, there's that, um, 
what is it like twins or whatever they yeah. have that kind of feeling, feeling whatever yeah. I never had anything like that in my life but I had a mad feeling in my stomach it was, and like it's only like because I know what unfolded I related to it now but I was like nothing happened nothing was different about my day I had nothing but I was nothing different like I sat there and I, I had a weird thing in my stomach here it was like it was like it was like nerves but like I never felt before and there was no reason for it I was going what is that like forgot about it anyway and then um, about I'd say about an hour later my brother rang me and he was like uh, he was like look I remember I just picked up the phone and I would, I'd always I just have a have my wife Eve kills me because whenever I pick it up I'd, I'd go away from wherever I am so if I rang here and I'd end up out yeah. there I'd just go away so that I can think yeah. when I'm talking like but uh, I ended up, went out the back and then I was on the phone and he just said he was crying he was like yeah, Tom's dead and I was like what? I was like I was like what, I was like, what are you on about? And he was like Tom's after dying and I was he was crying he was there and I was like what are you on about? Like, I was like, I couldn't, my brain couldn't get it around it, like, you know? And uh, I remember then as I was on the phone, I was saying, he's, he's not, like, I was like, what are you on about? And then, then as I was talking, I realised this is happening. And I still was saying he didn't, but I was like, this is happening. I was like, this is actually real. Do you know? And I just remember the the, the feeling, man, it was, it's, um, you, I don't know, the, the world stopped or something. Do you know? It's like, Whatever was going on, it just stopped. I was just like, no matter what was going on around me, there could have been bombs going off around me, I wouldn't even have noticed them. I was just, I was out, like, you know what I mean? And I remember we were driving down to, um, so it was in my sister's house. He, so he ended up going out for the night with the boys and whatever. He got up to taking drugs and then he cycled to my sister's house because he couldn't go home because he was worried, oh, look, I'm going home knowing dead, like. So he cycled to my sister's house, but there, it was so early in the morning when he was getting in, they were like, my sister was gone to work and stuff. So um, he went in and uh, he just sort of just, he just lay down on the couch and went to sleep. And that was it, like, you know, so mm. we, we took uh, oh, comfort, we took comfort in that, there, like, like yeah, yeah, you know, he was literally, even when we went in the scene and on the couch, he was, you know, the way you would be going to sleep, like, just panned out, like, and just, um, yeah. you know, it was, it was rough in fairness. And I suppose the main thing of it, like, we had to, it, do you know the way during the day you can get away from your day for a couple of whatever watch it, watching the telly or yeah. whatever you're doing there was no getting away like every, you lived every second mm -hmm. like for I don't know how long it was it could have been till things started to feel a bit better it could have been four months or something you know and then all of a sudden you're starting to you're able to watch the telly without thinking or do you know you get into yeah. a, you, something happens you know but um, yeah we, li you, we lived every second of that for how was your parents today? yeah they're good yeah they're, it took it took, to be fair now, like, uh, the house was dark, like, for a long time, like, the, you know, there was just, there was no happiness, and, you know, mm. you could feel, even when they were, even when they were happy, like, there was that just oh, hanging over them, you know, it was, um, it was, it was very tough, and to be fair to them, like, they got through it, and, you know, they're, like, they're resilient, like, you know, and, mm. you know, to, to be fair, they have each other, they have all the rest of us, you know, my, my sisters, you know, and there's loads of love in the house, like, so, they got through it and they're, they're happy out today now, like, you know. And you just have to take comfort and just saying to them, like, if they're watching, they don't know all they could for them, you know what I mean? It sounds like it was a lovely household and you've lovely parents. As you said, a lot of love and attention and affection and everything. And sometimes these things happen, you know what I mean? And people fall in with the wrong crowd if they haven't got the confidence to kind of walk away from the crowd and peer pressure plays a big part and all that and yeah. it's nobody's fault you know what I mean yeah. it's just something sometimes these things happen yeah yeah no, it's thanks, just so thanks. tragic yeah. they will take comfort in, in yeah. that like I know they will but yeah, um, yeah it's tragic and look it's, it is it's the way it goes sometimes and there's nothing you can do about it like you know no, you, no. you try your best you give it everything and sometimes it just unfolds like this like yeah. I said you know what you have a very similar story to a guy we had on previously his name is Philly McMahon yeah. He's, a, he's a, a Dublin GA um, footballer and yeah. his story is very similar to yours in terms of his own brother was, he, he was in, they were involved in boxing as well, I think James yeah. weren't there and he just went off the side as well while Philly stayed with the ball playing soccer, playing GA like yourself. Yeah. Like he just caught up, got caught up down the shops with the boys and, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, and he spoke about the importance of sport in his own life and 
having that one person and we from listening to you there now like your father was the one person like this that kind of had that kind of uh, time to give you to push in sport and yeah, whether yeah. boxing or football or whatever you know and, and I'm sure you had coaches as well growing up that yeah, gave you yeah. that extra bit of time you know uh, and I'm sure there's so many different people out there you know that had sport in their lives to take them away from the certain stuff I would have been quite similar in one way I had the sport but there was something lacking in my life at the time, you know, and and when I had a drink or a drug, I wasn't lacking anymore. It just gave me that sense of warmth and comfort yeah, and love yeah, that yeah. I needed, you know. It took me away from everything, and I had all these... I had a bit of confidence, you know, I felt loved, I felt warm after taking drugs, yeah. e- ecstasy, you know, and tablets, and it took me away from all the shit that was going on yeah, in my head. Yeah. You know, because I can understand why people do use drugs. You know, um, mm. and it doesn't it doesn't mean they have had a bad life or anything like that. Sometimes it's just that get away from the reality of the stuff that's going on in their heads yeah. or going on in the external. You know, the stimuli, whatever's going on around them, um, and it just feels nice. Yeah. But we don't understand people that use. We don't understand the consequences of our actions on use of drugs. Like mm. we don't. For me, I didn't really care whether I was alive or dead. I just cared about not feeling the emotions and 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 all the pain of 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 different stuff that would have went on in my early childhood and stuff. And that's the drugs really, really comforted me. You know, they gave me all these little nice feelings and yeah. they gave me love. Believe it or not, love. Yeah. And even with James, like I never tried heroin. It was cocaine and, 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 and prescribed meds, but James used opiates, which is a complete sense of love. Mm. You get real love, comfort from, from heroin, you know, and um, from my... I smile when you talk about it because it reminds me of heroin, like, yeah. it's such, so nice. Do you know it's what I mean? Just, That's yeah, why yeah. yeah. people use it, you know, it's, you know? Uh, with opiates and heroin, especially, it's it um, attaches to the the pain receptors in your brain and the pain mm. receptors in your brain is for mm. physical and emotional pain it's the same thing mm. when yeah. you take opiates and heroin like that it just kills all the pain so all the emotional pain just makes you feel so comfortable you could be lying do- down in a pool of piss on the side of the street and we know people in that situation mm. today and feel no pain so, so um, look you've spoken about your brother with huge uh, yeah. the dignity there and I just want to commend you on that, you know, and thanks mm. for being so thanks open with us, mm. you know, um, and I wish your parents and yourself well. Um, before we wrap it up, uh, I just want to ask you one or two questions about the football now again. Um, best player you played against and best player you played with? Best player I played against, I would say, um, I, that game, uh, you know, Old Trafford that time, Rooney was playing and, to be fair, like I was watching Rooney all, like on my life, you know, and I, I knew he was good, like, but just on the pitch, like I couldn't um couldn't believe the, the just the movement, the you know, everything about it. Like I was like it wasn't even so much what he was doing, like when he got the ball, he might only touch it once, but it was where he was picking it up and then like soon as he passed it where he was going, I was like I couldn't um just how how mm. good it was. I know like you had unbelievably talented players there that day too, like but like even more technical than him. But I was just I was taken back by him. I was like, This is um mm. that's another level. Like I was like I can see I could do you know what it's easy to say, ah, he's not world class or whatever, but I can see now why people put him up there and they do talk about him mm. with you know, Ronaldo's and Messi's and mm-hmm. I know I know like I wouldn't think he's like they're different gravy, I think yeah. in my eyes, like, you know, but um, I could see how he ends up in the conversation. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I think when him and Ronaldo was at United, Rooney was probably above Ronaldo at yeah. the ages of 18 and 19. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Ronaldo definitely passed him out. Yeah. But there's no doubt about it. Rooney was world class yeah. up until the day he retired. Yeah, yeah. You know, even in the MLS, the goals he was scoring, yeah. it was easy for him. Do you it know was, what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah. like, as you said, he it does levels to this and he was at the top. Yeah, yeah. Know? There was yeah. probably another gear there for him as well. Oh yeah, yeah. There was yeah. probably definitely another gear. There was more potential. Maybe he was hampered by his lifestyle and yeah. I'd say there was not, definitely more. Yeah, you know, and his body shape as well. Yeah. He looked like he was a bit prone to carrying weight. Yeah, stuff, he did. You know? Yeah, he obviously he always looked like that. He, he would have been mine, a player that I would have admired as well, Rooney. He would have been like he would have been my reason to watch United back in the day because yeah. I just yeah. loved watching him off the ball yeah. and you know uh, things like that. So I can definitely. Yeah. yeah, related with that. Yeah, best player you played with. Do you know what? Um, 
there are some great ones there, but I like I'd always stick with it. And you know, he's our manager. You know, Colin Healy, like, but mm. just um, he could fought. He could. He's the type of player he could um. I remember a couple of years ago there we were we were at the top of the the league and all the rest of it. He we were we were down bodies a couple of injuries and he's retired now but I think it was two years at the time or a year maybe but um I hadn't played ball in a year like and manager was like listen will you call into the training room just fall in for the week like because we're down bodies we just need numbers something like that and um he hadn't trained you know, in so long like and I remember he just fell in and just couldn't get near him and he just you know just with ease he was just yeah. Just stay at the level he left it at, you know what I mean? Mm, Whereas, like, yeah. I, I could never understand how he maintained the fitness, the lot of it, like, you know? Mm. So, um, yeah, I'd always go with him. I was at the cross for the bicycle kick as well yeah, against yeah. Pats. Unbelievable, yeah. wasn't it? I was at, I was, I was nearly at every game. I was living in a house belonged to the Simon that time. I was only in, in recovery, it was just out of treatment. And uh, I was going to all the matches in Torrance Cross 2014, 2015, you know? And we were down in the corner as well where it happened. And uh, in that season, there was a lot of late goals for City. He didn't we, quite, didn't yeah. quite get to the league that season. No, we didn't. But it was a great campaign. Yeah, wasn't it was. It? We we like that. You're right. We, we had um, up. Marcus we, Sullivan was playing. Yeah, well we just at the stuck time. at it, and we ended up last minute goals. Yeah. Like, but that one was against, ten of them. That one was against Pats, and uh, I would have grown up a Pats fan because my dad is from Inchicore, All and right. I was raised. Pat, I was mask off for Pats and everything when I was a child. But uh, that's another story. But uh, it was a good Pats team that Keith Fahey and all. But it was two all. It was in the last yeah, it minute, was, it was yeah. very important, and was. Colin Healy went up with the best bicycle kick you'd see, you know, like, some was goal, wasn't it? Right in front of the shed as well. Yeah. Uh, you oh. missed them live moments, though, yeah. the crowd, yeah. yeah. no, that was that was, that was, um, that was one of the great ones, like, you know, even yeah. in terms of Cork City, through the years, like, that's probably one of the best goals you're likely to see, yeah, like, yeah. you know. And um, we have, we've had a few Cork City players from where we're from as well. Uh, Keane Coleman at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Patsy Frayn, one of the best yeah. Cork City players of yeah, all time. A lot of fellas say he was the best, you know, yeah. one of the most gifted player anyway, yeah. like, uh, yeah. to ever play like, uh, for Cork City. Yeah. You heard that a lot. Like, yeah, yeah, and I've spoken to him there last year at a Rockmount game. Uh, I don't know if it was Rockmount, rather than Munster Senior League game, anyway. And he was saying to me, he played against Gaza, he played against some great players, but he said he never felt. Um, he never looked at it like you a while ago. He never looked at a player and felt intimidated. Or he always felt he was comfortable yeah. with his own ability. Do you yeah. know, he felt like he, that he could play against anybody. They have two arms and two legs like me. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he said, in spite of playing against all these uh, great players and that, the best honor of him was just representing his home city and just yeah. having a career with his home city. I, I can really relate to that, like, because it does give me um, great comfort and a, a boost, like when I. Do you know, just being able to, it's almost the parish mentality or the, the GA type mentality thing, mm. like, you know, the way that soccer doesn't really have that, like, but um, it's nice, it's a luxury, like, to actually mm. be able to have it in soccer, like, and mm. I'm lucky enough, I have it at the moment, you know, I'm representing, like, Pats, you know, um, there is, there's, um, especially when you're doing well, when you're doing well, yeah. you know, around town there, like, I remember John Crawford used to always say to us, like, you got lads, we hadn't experienced any success yet like but he's like i'm telling you now he's like if you're successful with this club he was like you'll be he goes they'll be high five in your own town for the rest of your life <laughs> wherever you go you know what i mean he goes even when he goes you want you went to a pub they'll be giving you free points or whatever you do and he was bang on you know yeah. like when, when when we were doing well you couldn't like johnny mcguire was like john lennon there for oh, a while wasn't unbelievable, he? <laughs> unbelievable like i remember we were up in the secret garden one night we were after i don't know we win something or whatever but I mean, no, like, the carry on of us, like, no one would have got away with it, like, the sh I remember one of the boys was swinging off the chandelier, <laughs> there was, we were up on the chairs, and, but it was just, I remember the security was coming over to give out about it, and I, I remember the owner of the, the Sea Garden, or whatever it is, was like, stopped them, was like, look, just leave Matt, just yeah, leave yeah. him, like, do you know what I mean, they, they had that kind of, like, look, they done, it's almost like they done their job, like, just leave them, leave them have a tear up there, and yeah. whatever goes, like, if they break, if something breaks, whatever they'll fix it. It was common that attitude, you know. So, um, you know, there was so just back to that with Patsy, like the representing your yeah. the city man is um is is a great feeling and what an honour it is too, like you know. Yeah, and look, um, you're I suppose going through a tough patch there, but you'll get there again. You've been through two liquidations, yeah. You know, you've been through a lot with the club, mm -hmm. and you've had the highs of cup wins and league wins and everything, and you'll get there again. Yeah. And I uh, wish you nothing but the best for yeah. going forward. And uh, thanks a million for coming on the podcast. My pleasure. Thanks, thanks very, very much, much for having me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we'll see everybody next week again. Uh, Thank you. See you later.